Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be part for the Moz Heise Cantina set review. I know I've not posted these in an incredibly long time, but I have gotten a lot of new stuff to build and do set reviews on. So now I'm gonna hopefully get back into this. If you have not watched the other three parts, I recommend you do that first. Links will be in the description below, unless you don't really care about the stuff I did over there and you just really care about getting into the actual cantina that I recommend that this is the one where you start off at. And if you'd like to enter my giveaway, a link will be in the description below about how to do that. Now then, let's get into the video. So what I will be showing you guys today is all of the exterior and the roof and a little bit of the interior. Now then, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to show you of the exterior is going to be this one out of the two uh, evaporators they have in this set uh, they are actually both designed and built very differently than another I believe this is the less detailed one in my personal opinion you guys can have other ones basically I believe what they use this for was to turn all the mist and hot air into water this one is at one of the corners of it they're both at the corners I do think they look really nice and the only the the thing that they both have on is this on the top. So that is like the one thing that they both have. Over here, you have like this nice little area for your dewback. He actually has some studs that you can put them on. So if you want equipment so he just doesn't really move, you can do that. And he does look very nice since I have my two sand troopers over there. I do keep the uh, riding poles or whatever you want to call them on those areas. And over here, he's got like this little area where he's got some water for that. They use trans blue plates. And then over here, they have like a little bone for him, which is really nice. And I think they have like a really nice area for him over here. And like they have these things all around. I'm actually not sure what they're for, but you know, it's just cool that they decide to add them. This is the next area that I'm going to show you is the front door or like the main entrance area. Uh, starting out over here, I have my two sand troopers talking to the Imperial spy, telling them how the two droids that they're looking for are inside. I do like how over here they have like this nice little detail over there with those bricks they have facing backwards, which are really nice. I can't actually read what that says because I don't understand whatever language they use, but I think it says Maz Lizzie Cantina. And then over here is what they use to open the door, which I think is really nice. And there's a whole lot of studs and plates all around the area. So the character, like how the Imperial Spy, only one of them is on it. So, you know, if you ever want to get him into like a different position, I think that's really nice. The way how to open it, it said inside the manual, as I showed you earlier, that to they did it up like this because they said it's better for playability when I think that's silly because it just doesn't stay. If you would do it from side to side, when you just pull it to the side, it would stay and it would be accurate. So playability and accuracy would be way better. I don't know where the designers got that idea from. The next part that I'm going to show you is the main entrance area, because I did say I was gonna show you a little bit of interior. Uh, as you can see, there are three chairs here and this little lamp. The chair over here can actually spin, but the other two are forced to stay in that same position. I guess my favorite part of this whole area is this little thing over here, which is supposed to detect the droids. You know, the bottom part's supposed to hold them and the top scans them, which I think is really cool. And it's probably my favorite part of the whole front door area. The next thing on my list is the second evaporator. Uh, as you can see, it is actually much more detailed. There's a lot more stuff around it than there was the other one which I think is great. At least they have one incredibly detailed thing. I don't know why they didn't make them both look like this or both look like the other one. I'm not the designer. I cannot answer that question or, you know, be like why I did this. It is connected by like this little Technic clip, which is connected like that. It does not really stay so much. It can easily come off. So if you ever want to like lift it up, it just falls down a lot. So I think a lot of the support is going to be here and how the Mos Eisley Cantina stays closed because everything else is basically connected with like a Technic pin, like those annoying black pieces that you see and not like these type of things. 
This is the next part that I'm going to show you. I can't really say what it is, but I can tell you what this is. This is actually what you used to do with the uh, play with Han and Greedo. When I talk about the interior in that area, I'll get more into that. So basically just push it in and then the guy in the seat on the other side, on the side that you pushed it in, basically gets flung out. And as you can see here, there are a whole lot of crates. The middle one here actually has a crowbar. The one over here has got a pair of binoculars. I'm pretty sure that's three or five. I don't remember. And the one over here has got like those old pair of binoculars that you generally see on a type of gun. This is probably my favorite crate out of all the crates that they use here because it's printed and it has an insane amount of detail, which I absolutely love. It does have the Imperial symbol on both sides. I just am surprised that Lego does printing for this, but they can't do printing for some of the other stuff like that door. But for this type of crate, they would it basically, it's like spitting in our faces, like saying, yes, we'll do the insane stuff, but not the easy stuff. And the last thing is just like this little thing over here. I'm not even truly sure what it is. I can't even guess what that is. It's just there maybe they saw it there they're just like let's add it i can't tell you i have no idea this is the final part of the exterior uh this is the back entrance to the cantina or i guess like woo her's entrance to the cantina the door opens just like the other one because you lift it up i guess this one stays better maybe i built it wrong so it stays better i guess that's a good thing that i built it wrong then but it does if you were to tell this one is just like a um, sand color but the other one over there was gray because as you see over here they're both gray and not one sand one gray and then this is like his own little entrance area i'm pretty yeah this was actually a printed piece so that was really nice thank you for that and then you have like these little vents here i'm not truly sure what they're for and then on top there is the uh like i guess you can call it like a dome piece so you can access the interior so that was all for the exterior, but I'm not really sure if you count the roof as an exterior more, just like part of the set itself, because it's basically just like this nice little piece that you have here, which just covers the canteen a little bit. You could just see how I have some of the stuff displayed. And yeah, that is all for part four of the Mars Isley Cantina. I hope you guys leave a like and subscribe.